<laughs> Making sure you're in the shot, Em. Yeah. <laughs> you look a little wild. Why do I have so many chins? <laughs> Hello, Palpation Nation. Welcome Hello. to Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving. Is that the proper salutation? Yeah. Got my turkey shirt on. Turkey lurkey. I got my stinky shirt on. I ate turkey on. yesterday. I didn't. We are on Thanksgiving long weekend call and we are out cutting deads. So today by popular request since I have a cameraman with me, I'm going to do a step by step uh, dead cutting, uh, slowing it down and just going through all of the steps. So easy on the cameraman, she is not a professional. Oh, it's getting a little shaky. So we've had a change of plans in filming the step-by-step -step PM at this stop because we're not getting out. Why aren't we getting out? Because there's because that's a screen truck because you says real fast because this man's going to haul him away. The dead hauler is here, so dad's got a boogie. Maybe at the next stop. Push that button right there. No push it and hold it in. Oh, nice job, Ed. So the dead truck was here, but Emerson, instead of, so instead of filming the video, Emerson got to load deads. Did you get to press the button? Did you load deads into the truck? Oh, that's a pretty fun job, isn't it? You get to run a winch all day and drive a big truck? Maybe that's what you should be when you grow up. Yeah. And now we have to go all across God's green earth. Yeah, we got a bunch more deads called in. Can you tell me how he drops the deads out? Uh, then, then the back like just opens track. up. Emerson, everybody on the vlog always asks what happens to the dead cows after I'm done with them. So what happens? Factory. They go to a factory, and then what happens to them? They like dog food and stuff. <laughs> That's right. Dog food and makeup. <laughs> dog food and makeup. Okay, now we've had a whole bunch of postmortems called in, so we are now in hyperlapse mode. Uh, I'm gonna cut this dead, and we got an hour drive, and another dead, and then two more deads, and then just some deads. Oh, that was This guy had big clots of pus in his chest and he also has a pericarditis, so an inflammation of the heart surface. Technically it would be an epicarditis, but but we always call it pericarditis. I don't know why we call it pericarditis. This guy has a severe cellulitis, so I'm not going to pick up my camera because I'm filming with my phone right now. But here's his subcutaneous tissue, and cellulitis is an infection underneath his sub-Q. So there's all of the tissue underneath the epidermis that is inflamed and infected. His whole side of his body is like that, just nasty and smelly. Yeah, and I ain't gonna lie, yeah, I started to have my doubts, yeah. My okay everyone, by special request, I will be doing a post-mortem from start to finish going really slow. I was at a feedlot last week, a non-client, and they said that they'd always wish for this video. Uh-oh. I've gotten lots of those videos before. What? The battery's flashing. Okay, so the first step is we want the animal left side down so we're not messing around with the rumen and we can visualize the abdominal organs. And the next most important thing is a sharp knife. So a sharp knife is going to make everything better. Everything better. Okay, so for my first step, what I do is I prop the animal's leg like this. So I'm not using any muscle power. I'm just kind of using a little bit of leverage. I make an incision right into his flank and cut the skin back all the way to the butthole. Is that the technical term? The butthole? Yeah. The anus. Ooh. 
then you're pushing the leg back and you will start to see the coxofemoral joint. You just cut around it. Oh, it sprayed me. Cut the muscles in front and the muscles behind and the ligament to the head of the femur and the leg will stay there. Then you make him just off of midline incision all the way up to his armpit. Why just off of midline? Uh, if it's right on midline, you have to do a lot of skinning back on the brisket. Whereas if it's just off of midline, it goes nicely under the armpit. You don't have to peel all that tissue back. Do you want the sharpener, the steel? No. Oh. So then once again, I'm lifting the leg up, but not using any muscles. I'm just propping the leg against my hip, keeping my arm locked. Then I'm pushing away from me, cutting underneath of the armpit. And it's really simple to open up the armpit. You just have to keep slashing the tissue underneath and the leg will lay down. Okay, just wait. Can I pause for a sec? Until that leg's laying back. And then the next part is you want to cut underneath the neck all the way to in between the mandibles. And that'll expose the trachea and the larynx. Next, you put your knife in, make a scooping cut around. You'll be able to grab just in front of the larynx. which is the hard voice box, the Adam's apple. And you'll be able to just cut around it and cut it out. Here you have esophagus, that hole on the top. You'll be able to look at the esophageal lining. Then you put your knife into the larynx and just lift up. And that'll cut in between the cartilages and allow you to see the lateral arytenoids of the larynx and also into the trachea. You just split the trachea up a little more. Take a look there in the surface of the trachea. Next we go into the thorax. So the thorax is technically the hardest thing to get into. I split along the, the rib. And then I feel for a soft spot right here and that's called the costochondral junction. The rib goes straight and then it has this bumpy bit. That's where I place my knife and I'm able to cut through all of the costochondrals of the ribs. You could use an ax to do that or a uh, saw, what's it called, a sawzall? You can a use bone a sawzall. Saw? sawzall as well to cut through there and you can cut through there as well. I can't cut with it, my knife through this upper bone so I just split in between the ribs. And I just snap them back. And then you have access into the thorax. You'll want to make a cut to cranial ventral lung lobe to take a cross section look at there. And then also on the dorsal lung lobe, you want to take a look at a cross section there. Everything looks normal. Then we cut into the pericardium. I pull the heart towards you, and we just cut the heart out along its base, cutting through all of the great vessels. Take a look at the heart surface, split the ventral third off, and then we're looking at the left ventricle and the right ventricle, looking at their different uh, size ratios. So it sh should be a two to one to a three to one ratio. So two to one ratio. It looks good. Looks very good. Split in between the papillaries, looking at the valves, and then also looking at the papillary muscle structure so right there is an important place to look for uh, myocardial infarcts that's caused by histophilus somni. And we go into the other side of the heart. Once again, looking at the valve structure. Normally, if there's an endocarditis on the valves, it'll be the size of a piece of cauliflower. So they're quite obvious to see. Then I move into the abdomen. So I just split along the ribs here. And cut through the body wall. 
And then here's the last couple of ribs and I just push those open. And that allows me to visualize the kidney. Just cutting in and looking at the kidney. And then also the caudal vena cava where you cut an imaginary line from the, cr from the cranial pole of the kidney cutting towards the imaginary base of the heart. And that will split you right into your vena cava and you'll be able to visualize uh, venal caval thrombosis disease when you're looking right at that specific area. And from there, we just need to look into the intestines. So I or orient myself by finding my cecum. This is the cecum right here. It's the blind-ended sac. Uh, this allows me to easily identify my ileum, splitting into the ileum, looking at the payers patches, and also looking at the mucosal surface for signs of enteritis. Looks beautiful. And when we have the cecum, we're able to just flip everything over and look at the spiral colon. And this is important when we're looking for coccidiosis, especially in between the loops of bowel because there's often edema there, uh, which is called bowel edema disease. I always look into the bladder just to see if there's a cystitis or an infection of the bladder. Everything looks beautiful there. I check the last kidney, which is usually hiding right here. Hey, cut, I cut cross-section. Cross now we've looked at all the important internal organs. And the last thing we need to look at is the stifle. So we cut into the stifle by making a C incision. right at the area where his leg bends. Here we can see his cause of death. So he was euthanized secondary to a septic arthritis. See all of this pus and clots surrounding. He's even got tendonitis and bursitis. That's all infection uh, that's migrating up and down in his leg. So we take a look into that stifle basically to see if there's any signs of sepsis or septic arthritis. What causes that? Uh, usually mycoplasma pneumonia. So after that, there's some weird things we look for, but that's a basic post-mortem. And uh, you would get 90% of the things cows die from just from doing that. Good job, Dr. Creelman. Thanks. No problem. Watch this trick. Stay out of my gas hole. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>